Hey, Steph, you haven't shot well in L.A. Oh, he stinks. Oh, I didn't say that, Steph. But you are 21 of 51 overall down in L.A. You're 7 and 24 from the three-point line. I know everything. You're shooting 41% from the floor in L.A. You're shooting 29.2% from the three-point line, Steph. Now, you are averaging over 27, eight and a half and seven, which is just nasty numbers. Mm-hmm. But, Steph, you're not shooting well. Need you. Need you. I know everything. Oh, yeah. You better. Yeah, I know you know those numbers, too, Steph. Yeah. And I need you to shut up Rob Parker, who's out here talking that talk the other night. Man. Or the other morning. That was, that, that was something else. But I will say, stop it. I will say, when it comes to Steph, Fonte, as much as we loved, and look, they should have won game four. But as much as we loved him, the behind-the-back passes and the assists, for the Lakers, that's a win. For the, for the Lakers, that's a win. Right. They don't, they, if, if Steph is passing the ball off to others, and I know we know Clay, that it's not a win for the Lakers if right. Clay showed up that game. Yeah. But yeah. getting the ball out of, out of Steph's hands and not allowing him to get into a basketball rhythm, I will say this, Steph is the best shooter of all time. But at the same time, that PNR, he hasn't. I feel like the shooting was just different. And as as good as they looked, and that's why Game Four hurt so bad. As good as they looked, that's not really who the Warriors are, right? right? It wasn't. So they're working through it. Steph is okay. I'm gonna. He. It almost felt like I have to shoot here, and then he doesn't start out shooting right. well, and now he's trying to catch up because he wasn't shooting well. Now he's trying to find a groove. Now he's taking shots that he probably right. shouldn't take. So the whole thing was bizarre. So I think that. You you do use the PNR, but I, I the the pick and roll. But I also think you got to stick to what's got you here. You got to stick with your bread and butter. Keep the offense flowing because with Wiggins compromise, you need Clay Thompson. Well, you, you can't have Clay right. not touching the rock, and then you know even if the game is close, you need Clay lathered all game. Well, here's the deal with Clay Thompson because the pick and roll could work all you want to, but I do want to have less usage for Stephen Curry. Yes, when he's rolling, and I don't want that ball sticking. Sometimes with that pick and roll, the Steph Curry with the ball, the ball just sticks to him, and you don't get to that ball move. The Warriors have something on the whiteboard where they want at least 300 to 315 passes per game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You want about four passes every possession, five passes. You want everybody to touch it. The PNR, you know, Clay's got the Steph's got the ball in his hands the whole time. Nobody's touching it, including Clay Thompson. Now you talk about Clay Thompson, and I think Andrew Wiggins is going to play. Now a lot of people, you can believe what you want to believe. We'll see about that. If he doesn't play, this is huge because the Lakers have taken away Klay Thompson's airspace. He can't get open. They are suffocating him. They're, you know, he might as well be playing the box of one against Klay Thompson because they're saying that guy can't get off. Mm-hmm. And the last three games has not been pretty for Klay Thompson. 29.7% from the floor, Allen. He's shooting 33% from the three-point line. Now, overall from three, he's 8 of 24. Not the best percentage, right? 33%, like I just mentioned. Just 11 points a game, six rebounds. He doesn't get to the free throw line, but the 29.7% from the floor. And Clay at times likes to force it like he did in game four, at times in game five where he came out and started one of seven. So the Lakers, they're taking away his airspace. They are getting all up into him, making sure that he's not deadly on the catch and shoot. They will gladly let him dribble, 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 dribble. But without Andrew Wiggins, you're going to need a big Clay game but who's going to give him the space? How are you going to create space for him? That's one thing. It's easier said than done. No, I, I would agree. And here's the other thing, Bonte. When you look at the Kings, the Kings series, and Draymond had a very similar game in the Kings series where Warriors, the, their backs weren't as up against the wall as they were in right. Game 5, but you needed Draymond to show up, and he did. Bonte, why are we acting like Draymond can only do this once a series, right? right? Why, why, why? That can't be the line for Draymond, and he knows that. So I'd say this, Draymond, game six has to be a continuation of game five. Right. You can't just say, well, I got off in game five, so I'm going to go back to being afraid right. of the, the rim nah, in he, game he's six. He's got to be aggressive. You've got to be aggressive, and, and that will help you know, space out some things for Clay as well. Yeah, no doubt. Let's go to 6-5-0. Oh. Bonte, would it really be that bad to ask Clay to come off the bench? Moody could start for him, and then Clay could shift feast on matchups. Whenever Clay Thompson's in the game, he's going to draw the best defender. Yeah. Just because he comes off the bench doesn't mean all of a sudden, oh, yeah, uh, Malik Beasley's going to guard him. No, it doesn't work like that. No. 
He's going to see top defenders in this league no matter how long he plays because he's one of the most lethal three-point shooters this league has ever seen. So whether it comes off the bench or start, he's going to see a top defender. And the Lakers defenders that we've seen are all pretty decent. Yeah. You know, they're 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 decent. And when you're guarding Clay, it's a different type of guarding. Yep. And this is not disrespectful, not trying to be. You you don't need a GP2 type defender to make sure you don't get boogied on. Right. That's not what Clay does. Right. It's somebody who's just gonna give effort and say, I'm getting through every screen yep. and I'm not going yep. to sleep on him. So that is somebody that, that is a high effort guy, and the Lakers have a lot of those guys. So Unless there's a switch that ha- – even Austin Reeves. I mean, all of right. these guys there, – there aren't very many guys that are falling asleep. And when they have, because it's been few and far between, Clay hasn't been able to get into that rhythm. Yep, no doubt he hasn't. Let's go to Crash and Runner Park. Crash wants to get fired up for Game 6. What's up, Crash? Hey, guys. How are you doing this morning? I'm fired ready to up, roll. Ray, you're not a, you're a Steve Barnett. Fired up to be here right now. <laughs> yeah, I got – I got this feeling back tonight. We got Andrew Wiggins going to have that Michael Jordan flu game style thing going on tonight. I got a a hot bourbon bet going with my boy who's a Laker fan. Can't stand this kind of Laker, just all the stuff the Lakers are trying to jump out there. And the best part, guess me, they're going to hit game seven on Mother's Day because me and this guy share a birthday. What day do you think that is? Mother's Day. Sunday. Game seven. Mother's Day. Birthday. Hating each other, loving each other. It's going to be a good time. They're going to win this game, go to game seven, bring it home. Let's go. Let's go. I like that optimism right mm-hmm. there. I right. Listen, man, I haven't booked anything for Mother's Day. I want tonight at around 10 o'clock to say, Anna, tomorrow's our day. Saturday's our day. We're celebrating Mother's Day on Saturday because Sunday I'm going to the gym early. There's a run at Chase Center at 1230 on ABC. There you if go. That, if that is going to be the game because you still have Philly – Right. And Boston, what a, I mean, Jason Tatum, that 16 point performance, what a 14, and to say, you know what, we're going back to Boston for game seven. Yeah. And you get Harden disappearing, like always. Doc uh, Rivers in general. Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers. In I can't general. blame him, though. Boston took that from them. Boston took it from them. Now, the body language on Philadelphia, whoo, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was bad. That, that, was, that was bad. You know what, Bonte, going back to Crash's call and. Thinking about if there is a game seven, you talk about poetic justice and the Warriors possibly avenging the 3 1. What day did the Cavs complete the 3 1? You know what day that Father's was? Father's Day. Father's Day. I was there. Oh, sure. And me, they ruined there. a bunch of Father's Day for Warriors fans. So, you know what? If we can come back here and Dub Nation can get it going, yeah. the Warriors can get it going, we now, can say, you know what? It Have won't fun av- on Mother's Day. It won't avenge it I because. Love it. That championship's not coming sure. our way, but it does feel good if you can come back against LeBron James. But you got to handle business first. Three one, you got to handle it first tonight. Game set. Tyler Miller, do not. You better delete that message, Tyler Miller, because the fantasy sees that she's going to be all over me all weekend long. Can't afford that. <laughs> Can't afford that one. Oh, the hell, you think I am, dude? I'm working radio, man. We ain't, this is a booming like that, homie. Bonte, uh, 707, Comcast Business Text Line. Alan, can we please stop saying PR and just say pick and roll? What are we doing? If it bothers you that much, 707, I'm going to keep saying PR. Oh, should have uh, said that. Thank you.